Imagine the very beginning of the universe right after the Big Bang. It was a dark, simple place filled mostly with just hydrogen and helium gas. There were no stars, no galaxies, nothing like the complex universe we see today. Then, gravity started pulling this simple gas together and the very first stars were born. Welcome to Discoveries of Webb Space Telescope. I'm Tony Darnell. For reasons even astronomers aren't sure about, the very first stars to ever shine in the universe are called Population 3 stars, shortened to POP3. They are incredibly important because they are thought to be the universe's original light switches, ending the cosmic dark ages and forging the very first heavy elements inside their cores. These elements were then spread out when the stars died, seeding future generations of stars and galaxies, including the one we live in. So, in a way, finding POP3 stars is like finding our cosmic ancestors. But seeing them is incredibly difficult. They formed billions of years ago, so their light has traveled across the universe and is now incredibly faint. Also, they are expected to be part of relatively small galaxies or star clusters as their light gets stretched into infrared wavelengths due to the expansion of the universe. That's where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in. JWST is tuned specifically for seeing this faint infrared light from the distant early universe. Astronomers used Webb's powerful near-infrared camera, or NIRCAM, to search for these elusive first galaxies. They developed a clever way to find them, looking for galaxies with a specific light fingerprint, or spectra. Because POP3 stars are made of just hydrogen and helium, the galaxies they form would lack the light signatures, called emission lines, of heavier elements like oxygen. Instead, they would show very strong hydrogen light, like hydrogen alpha and hydrogen beta, and a feature called a Balmer jump. In another strange naming convention, astronomers call stars like this low metallicity, or metal-free stars. By using specific color combinations from Webb's filter set and analyzing the full light pattern, called the spectral energy distribution, they could pick out candidates that fit the POP3 profile while trying to avoid objects that might just be ordinary galaxies or black holes that look similar. To do this, they needed really deep images of the distant universe. They searched across a large area of sky using publicly available data from several deep JWST surveys, including Glimpse, Uncover, Sears, Primer, and the Jade's Origin Field, or JOF. These surveys provided the necessary filters and depth, but to see the faintest potential POP3 galaxies, they leveraged something called gravitational lensing, where the gravity of a massive galaxy cluster acts like a cosmic magnifying lens, making JWST even more powerful. The GLIMPSE survey, which looked at the Abel 61063 cluster, is particularly deep thanks to lensing. Using this method, the researchers found something very exciting. One strong candidate for a POP3 galaxy named GLIMPSE 16043, located in the GLIMPSE survey data. This galaxy, at a redshift of about 6.5, shows the key features they were looking for. Strong hydrogen alpha light, a pronounced Balmer jump, no signs of metal lines like oxygen, and properties suggesting it was very young and made of incredibly pure, metal-free gas. They also found a tentative candidate, JOF 21739. This may be one of the first stars to shine in the universe. Finding even one strong candidate is a huge step. It means their method works and that these rare objects might be detectable, while more detailed follow-up observations, like spectroscopy, which splits light into its colors to see the chemical fingerprint clearly, are needed to be absolutely sure this research is bringing us closer than ever to seeing the universe's very first stars and galaxies. It helps us test our ideas about how the early universe evolved and how the elements that make up everything around us 
and even us, first came to be. Discoveries of Webb Space Telescope is human-produced by Deep Astronomy. Consider becoming a member of the oldest astronomy channel on YouTube.